Good afternoon, Mark Delarducci, Director of the Governor's Office of Emergency Services. We're here in uh, Lincoln Heights in the town of Weed uh, and uh, uh, in Siskiyou County uh, at the Mill Fire. Um, uh, joining me today is uh, the mayor and uh, the sheriff, as well as uh, our, our CAL FIRE um, uh, partners. And um, we're here today doing an assessment of the impacts of this particular fire into the here into the into the community. Uh, we've been working with the with the mayor and the and the county officials to ensure that um, uh, resources that are necessary are brought to bear. And um, uh, yesterday, uh, of course, the governor did proclaim a state of emergency. And uh, with that state of emergency came uh, specific uh, capabilities to support the county and the city uh, with disaster aid and 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 funding. Um, uh, right now, the, the key thing is to uh, really assess what the what the unmet needs are. We're going to focus on lifelines, uh, which is power and water and communications. Uh, we're going to focus on what uh, need the needs of the community members are. Obviously, that's going to be you know uh, dealing with their sheltering situation, housing situation over the long term, and um, we're going to be talking about debris clearance and getting the community cleaned up uh, to begin to rebuild. Uh, this is a fast. Uh, effort that we're moving for, but it's important to understand that uh, while we're moving fast, this is also going to take some time uh, to work through. So it's more of a, a marathon, not necessarily a sprint, uh, but we are uh, all united in our efforts to be able to address this uh, in real time. And so um, I really appreciate the, the sheriff, the, the mayor, and our CAL FIRE partners to uh, working together. It is, it is the whole of government, um, and uh, soon we will be having a a local assistance center set up. We're having some town hall meetings. Uh, we'll be able to uh, provide uh, different agencies and departments, both governmental, non-governmental, uh, uh, faith-based organizations that will come together to, to outline what resources will be made available and um, you know help people uh, on their road to uh, recovery. Uh, we understand that this is a extremely challenging time. Um, really, our, our our deepest you know thoughts and and. And, um, and, and condolences and, um, and really uh, sorrow for the loss that has happened here. Uh, it's unfortunate we're seeing these kinds of events uh, time and time again in the state. Uh, but um, uh, I want to really want to, I can't thank the fire service, our, our law enforcement partners enough for their immediate response uh, to this, trying to keep this as contained as possible. Uh, under very, very difficult uh, circumstances. Uh, the work that they did was uh, phenomenal and, uh, and we, you know, we can't uh, thank them enough for, for all of their efforts. Um, for the public, just know that, um, that uh, we are leaning forward on this and um, uh, you know, more will come in the coming days uh, with more information on how um, uh, we'll be able to help you through this process. Um, so with that, I think that Chief Anthony from uh, CAL FIRE is going to say a few comments. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Chris Anthony, uh, Chief Deputy Director with CAL FIRE. I would also like to um, just really thank you for the partnership um, with the city and the county. You can really see that the local relationships here are, are very strong. And, um, and you know, those partnerships take time to develop and they need to be developed before the emergency starts, not, not during the emergency. Um, so, you know, CAL FIRE, in partnership with CAL OES, as well as um, our federal and local government counterparts, we knew that coming into this weekend um, with the extreme heat and how dry the fuels are throughout the state, that this was going to be a challenging weekend for us. Um, and um, unfortunately, um, there has been a, a, a really significant impact to this community as a result of the mill fire. And while the mill fire may not be a large fire in terms of acres burned, it is um, a significant fire in terms of the impact to the community and the number of um, structures um, that were destroyed and the impact mm -hmm. that's, that's gonna have on people's lives. And we absolutely recognize that. Um, before I turn it over to, um, to Chief Anzo, Anzo, who's our local um, unit chief here, I really do want to thank um, all of the um, first responders, the firefighters, and the law enforcement officers um, for the evacuations that did occur, um, as well as um, getting uh, you know this fire fairly well contained in a very short amount of time, given the challenges that um, that they faced, as well as 
within just a couple hours of this fire um, igniting a second fire not far from here, the mountain fire starting as well. Um, so Cal Fire, we have a lot of resources in the system. Um, Cal OES has uh, worked with uh, the local government fire service um, agencies throughout the state to pre-position a number of local resources as well. Um, our federal counterparts are also um, bringing in more resources into the state. So um, we're going to ensure from a CAL FIRE standpoint um, that uh, the resources that you need to be able to um, not only put this fire to bed but also to handle the mountain fire um, will be um, dealt with. But then just so you know we have you know plenty of resources still in the system for any new fires that may arise as well. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Phil Anzo. I'm the unit chief here in uh, Siskiyou. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, when the fire started on September 2nd, there was a red flag warning in effect for low humidities and strong winds. Uh, in the afternoon, the fire started uh, not too far from this location, and it gave very little time, spread very quickly, gave very little time for this uh, area of the community of weed to uh, get out of the way. Our resources responded very quickly, got into this vicinity, and they started focusing on life safety. They evacuated as many people as they possibly could out of the uh, before this fire hit this area. Uh, but you can see by the images uh, behind me that there was some, some very significant devastation that occurred in this area. Uh, that fire quickly moved across the highway um, into more homes and then eventually went out into the wildland area. Um, we sent a, a significant resource order down into the um, mutual aid system and successfully received a lot of resources in a short period of time to help us mitigate this incident. Lots of aircraft, lots of ground resources were brought in to, to mitigate this fire. Uh, we, did, um, we did have the fire extend into another community, which is further uh, northeast of us, the community of Lake Shastina and uh, we did suffer some uh, damage to structures there and some structure loss from the fire. Um, during that same time period, we started another incident, another vegetation fire in the county that uh, we needed to send some additional resources to, and it spread us very thin at that point in time. Uh, but we had a lot of resources that were coming to the area, so we were able to divide and, and do uh, the best we could with both incidents. Um, the, uh, I really want to thank the mutual aid system for uh, working so well and uh, work with our cooperators that we accomplished uh, with our law enforcement agencies. And unfortunately, the county of Siskiyou is well versed in wildland fires. And so uh, we have done this before. And this particular area was um, just missed by the Bulls fire in 2014, um, unfortunately. So um, it's something that we've dealt with in the past and uh, hopefully we can help mitigate uh, for the future. Thank you. Sure. Oh yes, thank you, uh, Jeremiah LaRue, Siskiyou County Sheriff. And I'd like to kind of echo what uh, Chief Anzo just talked about. There are so many people that are behind the scenes uh, at a disaster like this. And between local resources, state, and even the, the federal government, uh, we partnership very well. And I think the cool thing is that we're all unified, like we talked about. And I know that Siskiyou County is strong and resilient. And I know that we will get through this. It is very devastating. And when we hurt, when one of us hurts, we all hurt. We're, we all feel it. Um, and there's, there is a time that it's going to take for us to grieve and move on. Uh, but we will get there. So for the people that have lost their homes, property, and maybe are just confused uh, about what the future store is in store, just know that uh, there's a huge support group uh, standing behind you and with you that's going to walk alongside you and get you through this uh, whether it's at the city level or the county or moving on to the the state and beyond we had an amazing mutual aid response for law enforcement and we work well with fire uh, we are unfortunately well versed in the response to these uh, but we did have a great response with over 40 to 60 law enforcement officers that came to Siskiyou County uh, just from a simple phone call asking for help. So the mutual aid system works um, and encourage people to utilize that and don't go at it alone, no matter who's listening. If you have something that's affecting your community, reach out. That's why Cal OES is there and that's why there's other state resources and of course the county level. So I appreciate everyone's support 
um, and understanding and, and just so the public knows, you know, we, we do hear you and we do feel what you're going through. And so we do talk a lot about things that are occurring. There's a lot of unknowns, but that information will be forthcoming as soon as we can. Uh, but we're there with you, just so you know. I'm Kim Green and I'm the mayor for the city of Weed. Um, I was born and raised in the city and in this community. Um, many of my friends that I grew up with, went to school with, um, when I look at this area, I see their houses that used to be here and know where they lived. And it's, it was hard enough the first time and now our little city's going through this again. Um, and the, as Jeremiah said, we just have to be patient and let things kind of uh, spread out and then see what we have and who needs what we have and we will get all those resources to them. We've always had a really good relationship uh, with CAL FIRE and the other agencies that are here helping us. And um, we're, just, we're just appreciative um, that they're here for us. So thank you all. And uh, so now with this process of, while the, you know, the fire is still being addressed uh, and it will be a while, this area will remain closed until further notice. As you can see, you know, with all this devastation, this is, there's a lot of hazardous materials that are associated with a lot of this debris. And so we'll be working with the city and the county uh, in the debris clearance uh, process. Uh, but there will be a, an opportunity uh, when the time is right for you to come and look at your properties and be able to uh, look through them and, 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 and look for any uh, heirlooms or other kinds of things. Uh, but uh, right now is not that particular time. So we'll keep you informed. Uh, Cal OES, um, uh, what we do in our recovery operations will be with the city uh, and the county through the duration all the way uh, through the re rebuilding process. So um, we're going to leverage as many resources as possible to help you. And as I said, uh, in the coming days, uh, you'll learn more about uh, what services are uh, available, uh, how we can help, particularly with those those key areas, the lifeline re restoration, uh, what your immediate needs are, the needs of your children to get back to school, and, um, and uh, if you need any other specific kinds of assistance.